Welcome into the first Teal the Show of the Year. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside Frank Frangi. Frank, can you, can you believe it? Football season's back it's already. It's here. It already got here. <laughs> I blinked and it was here, but I'm glad it's here. I'm excited about the season. I'm excited about football. Uh, for as short as the offseason feels, it's really been a long offseason. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to be here with you all the way until 2025, which is hard to believe. Uh, but we're going to be rolling through. Best way to keep up with your team. So, uh, we're going to start this thing off as we start to kind of set the yeah. table for training camp. Today we're going to look at the Jaguars offense. Next week we'll look at, or later this week on Friday, we'll look at the Jaguars defense. Uh, so Frank, the, the Jaguars offense, it starts and kind of ends with Trevor Lawrence. I think it's in such a good place. I think that contract extension was so important because everybody relaxes now. Uh, Trevor's going to be here. You knew he was going to be here, but now contractually he's going to be here. I think everybody relaxes. I think they've made the offense better. I, I think the fact that uh, you traded Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley for Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr., I think that's an upgrade. And that's no disrespect to the other guys. I think it's an upgrade. I think the line will be better. I think Mitch Morse is going to make all the difference. He's a veteran physical guy. I like where I think this offense is going to be. All right, let's go through this bit by bit. We'll start with that quarterback group. But we know Trevor Lawrence, yeah. like you mentioned. Uh, the expectations are high. Just signed the big mega deal there. But... There's a new quarterback in that quarterback room. Yeah. Mac Jones, he's a guy, if you follow high school football in the area, played at Bulls here in Jacksonville, so you might have seen him a time or two. He's also a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Jaguars got him in a trade during the offseason. He joins the quarterback room, but he's going to be battling for that backup job with C.J. Beathard, who has been here in Jacksonville yeah. just as long as Trevor Lawrence has been here. So the two of them have a, a, a little bit of a connection. Going to be an interesting dynamic seeing C.J. Beathard have to battle for that backup job, and, and even the, the layer of do the Jaguars keep two quarterbacks or maybe three well that's the question the last question I think Mac Jones is going to be the backup quarterback I think they went and got him to be the backup quarterback Matt wants to resuscitate his career a little bit see what happens after one year as being the backup here but it was fun watching him in the OTAs in the minicamp he was comfortable he's a fun loving guy I think he's relaxed I think he brings a, a calm to the he, he seems like a 10 15 year veteran it's hard to believe he's such as young as he is He's going to be the backup quarterback. I believe that. The question is, do you keep three? Because C.J. Beathard was very valuable in helping Trevor Lawrence develop and help learn how to watch film and learn what to look for uh, from the opposing defenses. So I think that's the question. But I'd be very surprised if Mac Jones isn't the backup quarterback. He's talented. This is a first-round draft pick. This is a guy that's played 42 games. I mean, he's played a lot of football. I, I like Mac Jones as the backup, but I think he's going to be. All right, let's move along in that backfield, go over to that running back yeah. position. Travis Etienne has been dynamic when he's had the chance and, and had some good blocking in front of him. Uh, you know he's going to be the bell cow running back again for another year. Uh, different running back coach leading the way with him, but... I think Travis could be in for a big season. I think Travis Etienne is one of the 5'10 best running backs in the league. He doesn't get credit for being that. I think he's one of the better running backs in the league. He can do everything. He can run inside, even though that's not what people think of when they think of him. He's very fast. Uh, he's a very good pass receiver. He's becoming better in pass protection. I think he's a really good player. I think the key to that backfield is Tank Bigsby. You know what, Trevor, what, what, what ETN can do, and I think Travis has to stay healthy, and I think they've got to keep him healthy. Fewer carries. They've got to block better. But I think if Tank Bigsby can give him that downhill runner, which is what they need, give him that third and short. They, they're not very good on third and short. That's one thing that has to improve. I think Tank can help that. But I love Travis Etienne. I think Travis Etienne is one of the best, one of the, I'll say one of the ten best backs in the league. But I might go even higher than that. I love what they've got in him. I really do. Yeah, Travis has been absolutely fantastic. He's definitely on course to be one of the better running backs in Jaguars history. And that says a lot because there have been some pretty good ones along the way. But they definitely do need Tank Bigsby. Rookie year maybe a little bit of a disappointment with Tank. Uh, but we'll see if maybe they can get him going in year two. I'll tell you a thought about, about the Tank, Jamal. I think Tank's good. I think he got spooked early in the year. He had yeah. some fumble problems. And then he spent the rest of the time worrying about how to fix that. He had some weird plays happen early in the year. I think it got in his head. Tank Bigsby's a good player. The early part of the year got in his head. He never got it out. I think he's going to be good this year. It started in the first game of the year really for did. him. And, and there, there's no turning back. It's kind of one of those avalanche kind of situations where he was just never really able to get it back on track. All right, before we stop talking about the running back, there is a rookie in that running back room, Keelan Robinson. Uh, definitely going to be more of a kickoff returner. Yeah. But he's a guy that... I've at least been told over the course of the offseason, don't close the book yeah. on him having an opportunity to earn reps at running back. It would be as a third down back. Yeah. He's a pass catcher. He's, 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 he was brought here because they're trying to figure out what to do with kickoffs. Nobody's quite sure what to do with kickoffs now because the kickoffs is going to be so different, and he's a really fast guy. He's a little guy. Uh, if he plays, I think it's going to be in third down. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Don't close the book on him contributing to the team. Remember, Dearness Johnson's still here, too. He's a pretty good player. So it's a good running back room. 
If Keelan participates, I think it'll be as a pass catcher or as a return guy. All right, we'll see what happens. We still got plenty more of the offense to cover. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about that wide receiver room. That's straight ahead. All right, welcome back here into Teal the Show. All right, it's time to talk about those guys that catch passes, Frank. We got to talk about the wide receiver room that's kind of been been rebuilt here this offseason. A very quick rebuild on it. You lose Calvin Ridley, but you insert Gabe Davis. Then you lose Zay Jones, and you insert Brian Thomas Jr. Very new look to this wide receiver group. Christian Kirk is def- he was already kind of the elder statesman in the room, but now he really is. <laughs> Yards per reception is what's going to be different here. Both guy, both new guys, Gabe Davis, the former Buffalo Bill, and Brian Thomas Jr., the first-round draft pick, are get-deep guys. They average 17 yards a catch, give or take. They get deep. They score touchdowns. The one thing this – I'm telling you, the one thing this team really hasn't had since Jimmy Smith in the very early going is a guy that takes the top off and you've got to change how you play defense against them. I think the two new guys are guys that will stretch the field. That's the difference. Calvin Ridley's a good player. Zay Jones was a wonderful Jaguar. They've had good receivers, but they didn't – even Calvin, who's a fast guy – the defense didn't change. I think how the defense plays the Jags is going to change now because you've got to be aware of the deep ball, and that's the difference in the offense. This is the best collection of talents that I've seen Trevor Lawrence have the opportunity to throw to. I mean, different skill sets, different yeah. body types. Um, I, I really like the way this group comes together. There's no question. Remember yeah. now, you still got Evan Ingram, who right. caught a bunch of passes last year, and I think Christian Kirk is as good a slot guy as there is in the league. So you've got a, a very good core of receivers. But the difference is the deep ball, the, the ability to separate, the touchdown makers. Listen, you win Super Bowl with touchdown makers, man. You need some touchdown makers, and that's what Brian Thomas Jr., in my opinion, and Gabe Davis really gets them. Can't wait to watch them. All right, before we talk more about Evan Ingram, let's talk about the back end of that wide receiver group. There's guys like Parker Washington, yeah. Tim Jones. I mean, Tim Jones has been in Jacksonville for years now, seems to continue right. to make the roster. But there are a couple of young guys, Elijah Cooks, who's going to be fighting for a roster spot, uh, Brevin Easton, uh, Joshua Cephas, some undrafted free agents that have an opportunity to really compete for a job here. Wide receiver, that, those last couple of jobs are probably going to be the most competitive on the roster. They will be. And, I, and, I, and when you're good, you have good players all the way down your depth chart. There's no question about that. But make no mistake about this. How good you are comes down to how good your starters are. The one guy, though, that you mentioned to keep an eye on is Parker Washington. Parker Washington, by all accounts, everybody we've spoken with, had an enormously good offseason, got himself in shape. He looks the part now. Now, I don't know where you play him because you've got some pretty good starters ahead of him, but depth does matter. People get hurt in, in football. And Parker Washington, look, Elijah Cooks is big and looks the part. Joshua Cephas is, is the undrafted guy that everybody's talking about. But Parker Washington is the guy that I think made a big step in the offseason. Keep an eye on him. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on Parker Washington. I think pro football focus said he's one of the best kept secrets on the Jaguars roster. We'll see if he can live up to that and maybe not make it a secret anymore. All right, you mentioned Evan Ingram. Tight end's kind of cut and dry. We, we know Evan Ingram's the guy there, but yeah. behind him, Brenton Strange going into his second year. He's another guy that maybe didn't have the rookie season that he wanted or the Jaguars wanted, but hoping that he can build off that in year two. I talked to Doug Peterson about him, about Brenton Strange specifically, a little bit about a different Brenton Strange. He looks more fluid. He looks like more of a pass catcher. He's a physical guy. He's going to be a good blocker, like Luke Farrell, a big physical blocker. But he looked more like a pass catcher this year. Again, tight end's going to go how Evan Ingram goes. If Evan Ingram catches a bunch of passes, then the tight end position is going to be productive. If he doesn't, then it's not. That's just the reality of it. But in terms of other guys in that room, Brenton Strange looked a little more fluid. Doug Peterson noticed it, and I, and I think his other teammates did. I think he'll help the call. He was drafted pretty high now, uh, to your point. I think he's going to help the team more than, more than we thought. But tight end goes how Evan Ingram gives. Make no mistake about that. All right, let's talk about the offensive line, the last group on this offense, yeah. Frank. Uh, mostly the same collection of guys from a year ago, mostly. One new face right in the middle of everything. Mitch Morris going to be uh, the Jaguar center. I think the question that, that at least I want to know is how much of a difference can just one guy make for that offensive line? It's the biggest question mark on the offense. There's no question the offensive line is a question mark. That doesn't mean it won't be good. I hope yeah. they'll be very good. But that's the one we don't know a lot about yet. Uh, you've got three tackles now. You've got Cam Robinson, Anton Harrison, and Walker Little as a swing tackle, so you've got some depth there. You've improved your interior with Mitch Morse now, who probably wins the job. Luke Fortin is going to get a chance to compete for it, but I think most people think the veteran's going to be in there. How much does Brandon Sheriff have left? He's a tough guy. He's hard to get out of there. He, he won, he's a warrior, man. He wants to play. But he's older now. How much does he have left? Ezra Cleveland is the most athletic offensive lineman they've got. He's the guy that gets downfield on screen passes. But is he physical enough in the interior? 
I think they've got a chance to be a very good line. It was not a good line last year. It just wasn't. They've got a chance to be improved there, but that is the thing everyone's going to be watching. If there's a question mark on the offense, at least for me, that's the group. All right, Frank, we've worked from the top of the offense to the bottom of the offense, whole thing. So let's look at it now. From this time last year to now, has the offense gotten better, gotten worse in your mind? Oh, I think significantly better. Yeah. I think, I mean, if your offense wasn't good in the interior of your offensive line and all of a sudden you brought in a veteran center who's been on a really good team, that makes you better. So clearly you're better there. I, I'll say it again. I think the, the receiving room is as good as it's been in a long, long time with Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. joining Christian Kirk. So I don't think there's any question it's gotten better. Now, you got to stay healthy. Everybody got hurt last year and that affected. When, remember this. When Christian Kirk got hurt, they were 8-3 and three and on their way to a first possession touchdown against Cincinnati, and the world blew up after that. I'm not saying it's all because Christian Kirk got hurt, but it certainly factored in. I promise you it did. And by the way, had they won that Tennessee game, he was going to be back for the playoffs. He was close. He was very close. So they've got to stay healthy. Trevor's got to stay healthy. They've got to protect. But I think to your question, from a personnel standpoint, it's a much better offense than it was a year ago. There were a lot of high expectations for this offense a year ago. So saying that you feel like they're in a better spot, which I agree with you, I do feel like they're in a better spot. I think that says a lot. That goes a long way. Um, we'll see if they can live up to those lofty expectations. Of course, that's just on paper. we got to see it out on the field. Training camp getting ready to get underway. We'll have plenty of coverage here. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us for the first Teal the Show of the year. Uh, we'll be back on Friday night here on Channel 4 at 1120. Frank, thanks for being here. Thanks to you at home for tuning in. Good night, everybody, and go Jacks.